Chapter 6a is titled Trigonometry. You're going to get a lot of terminology in this chapter. Our first lesson is actually broken down into three parts. For day one, we're going to look at angles and their measure in degree form. We'll describe angles on a coordinate plane and we'll use degree measure today. Eventually we'll look at arc length and sectors and then we'll model real life problems. Make sure to put your name at the top and you're definitely going to want a calculator for later. The definition for trigonometry is the measurement of triangles, including both sides and angles. Today we're going to focus specifically on the angle portion of our definition. When graphing an angle on a coordinate plane in standard position, we always have an initial side for our angle and a terminal side. Those are also known as rays. The initial side is always on the x-axis over on the right, going towards positive infinity. That measure starts at zero. As you rotate around your coordinate system in a counterclockwise direction, you get to the end of your angle, which is known as the terminal side. The boundaries for the coordinate system would be zero, 90, 180, 270, and if you go all the way around for your angle measure, that would be 360. Identifying the quadrant you're in is often helpful. If the angle measure has its terminal ray between 0 and 90, you would be in quadrant 1. In this picture, our terminal side is located in quadrant 2. That means the angle has measured something between 90 and 180. Continuing on down at the bottom left, the quadrant between 180 and 270 is quadrant 3. And then back towards the beginning, you're in quadrant 4. Now recognizing this direction is counterclockwise, this would be a positive angle measure. Your angle can also go in a clockwise direction if it has a negative measure. So positive measures go counterclockwise and negative angle measures count clockwise. And we use our boundaries the same way. On the right, you're asked to sketch two different angle measures, positive 145 and negative 145. Using those boundaries for quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4, to graph positive 145, you have your vertex at the center and your initial ray over on the right on the x-axis. That's your zero start location. A 145 degree angle will go in a clockwise direction. It'll go past 90 and somewhere over here into quadrant 2. That should be an arrow right there. Our terminal ray then counts over here to the left and that would be your angle measure. We'll put a little symbol there for angle. If our degree is negative, again, we start with our term, or excuse me, our initial ray on the right-hand side, but now we're gonna count in a clockwise direction. If I count clockwise, there's negative 90 down below, and negative 145 would actually be down over here in quadrant four, well, quadrant three, sorry. <laughs> there we go. So you can see, even though the numbers are the same, they end up in different locations. Coterminal angles in degree form are angles that share the same initial and terminal rays, but they're different numerical values. Typically, when asked to state coterminal angles, you give one positive and one negative coterminal angle answer. Notice the two examples on the right. We have their initial ray over here on the x-axis, and our terminal ray down here in quadrant three. Our alpha angle, which would be a positive angle measure, and our beta angle, which would actually be a negative measure, are considered coterminal. They both share the same initial and terminal rays. Also notice in the next picture, you could have them both be positive. So here's your alpha angle with the initial and terminal side, and your beta loops all the way around. It would be bigger than 360. They both share the same initial and terminal sides. To calculate this, it's really easy to determine one positive and one negative angle measure. All you do is add and subtract 360 from the original angle measure. So you start with your original angle, we'll call that our alpha, and you add and subtract 360 in that order. It's super straightforward. All right, let's take a look at the examples down below. For A, B, and C, determine what quadrant each angle is in. Then find one positive and one negative coterminal angle. 
58 degrees if we put our vertex right at the center and our initial ray on the right. 58 is a positive angle measure, so we're going to count up through quadrant 1 in a counterclockwise direction. Now 58 degrees is just a little bit over half, so that would put us maybe somewhere here. Here is my terminal ray. So we'll call this our alpha, our initial first angle. If I want a positive and a negative co-terminal angle, what we'll do is we'll take that 58 degrees, we always start with the original angle, and we'll add and subtract 360. To add 360, that'll give us an angle answer that's greater than 360. So either use mental math or grab a calculator. 58 plus 360 is 418 degrees. If you were asked to graph that degree measure, we would have the same initial and terminal ray. To get our negative coterminal angle, take 58 degrees and subtract 360. That gives you negative 302 degrees. So we found out we were in quadrant 1. I, said, I guess it says determine what quadrant it is. It is quadrant 1. And we have one positive and one negative coterminal angle. Our next example is already greater than 360 degrees. It's 500. If we start with our initial ray like we're supposed to on that right-hand side, and we count all the way around through all four quadrants, that's only 360 degrees. To get to 500, we're going to have to go 140 more. So somewhere over here in quadrant 2. There's where our terminal ray is located. So here's our alpha symbol to represent that big loop when we're over in quadrant 2. To find one positive and one negative, we just add and subtract 360. It's a very consistent process. So if we have 500 and we add 360, we get a whopping 860 degree coterminal angle. But we have to be careful on this one. Watch what happens when we subtract. We're following the process like we're supposed to, but 500 minus 360 is 140. And that's not a negative answer, that's a positive answer. So both of these work for positive. Either of these, that's not even how you spell either. There we go, let's fix that. Either answer works for positive. You don't have to list them both, one is fine. But we still have to figure out a negative coterminal angle. What we'll do then is take that 140 and just subtract 360 from that answer. 140 minus 360 is negative 220. And that would in fact be coterminal with 500 degrees. If your given angle is negative, just remember to rotate that in a clockwise direction. Again, we'll put that vertex in the middle. Negative 134, that would put us down into quadrant 3, just shy of halfway. So there's our initial angle, alpha, and we're down in quadrant 3. To get our coterminal, we'll follow our same definition. Start with your original angle and add and subtract 360. If we add 360, we get 226 degrees. There's our positive answer. And if we subtract, we get negative 494 degrees. That's determining positive and negative coterminal values in degree form. Some angle measures have you converting from degrees to minutes and seconds or in decimal form. When that happens, we just have a couple of definitions to follow. One degree measure is equivalent to 60 minutes. One minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. If you have one degree, that's the same then as 3600 seconds. Depending on the direction you have to go from one form to the other, this is very calculator friendly. So in the first example, it says convert 37 degrees, 21 minutes, 33 seconds to decimal form. So degrees, minutes, and seconds, we abbreviate that as DMS. We're converting from DMS to decimal form, which means we just want to have a decimal past the degree measure. What we do for this is we just start off with a degree, and we don't do anything with converting that. That's our whole number answer. 21 minutes would be the equivalent of 21 sixtieths of a degree since we use the definition one degree equals 60 minutes. 
33 seconds is equivalent to 33 over 3600. And that would be the equivalent of 33 seconds to a degree. The nice thing about converting to decimal form is you should be able to enter this all into your calculator at once. So grab a calculator if you don't have one. You definitely want to practice this. And we're going to round our answer to four places. So I'm going to add that in here, to four places. 37 plus 21 sixtieths plus 33 36 hundredths should give us the same whole number, 37 point. I, I got approximately 3592 degrees. So, so the equivalent decimal form to four places from your minutes and seconds. Over on the right, we'll do the opposite. Here we're asked to convert a decimal form to the degrees, minutes, and seconds kind of definition. For this one, we take the 83, again, we take the whole number, and we leave it as the start of our final answer. That's the whole amount of degrees. Then we take the decimal form, the 0.41356. To figure out how many minutes that would represent, we multiply that decimal by 60. If you type that in, you should get approximately 24.819. The whole number amount in front of the decimal would be the number of minutes represented in the initial problem. Then we take the decimal from that answer to determine our number of seconds. So again, this is a pretty straightforward process if you're following along. 0.819 times 60 again gives us 49 0.14, and that would give us 49 seconds. So to convert to degrees, minutes, and seconds, we have 83 degrees, 24 minutes, and 49 seconds. We won't do a lot of work with DMS, but these would be the, the rules to convert from one form to the other. All right, last but not least, complementary and supplementary angles. This is a little throwback to geometry. Two positive angle measures are complementary if their sum is 90 degrees, and they're considered supplementary if their sum is 180 degrees. So to find the complement and supplement of a given angle, we subtract the value from 90 or 180. Again, calculator friendly. To find the complement of 35 degrees, we'll just write comp right here for complement, and we'll take 90 minus 35. A complementary angle would be 55 degrees, just like that. A supplementary angle, same process, but now it's going to have a sum of 180. So to determine the supplement, we'll take 180 minus 35. And our supplementary angle is 145 degrees. Try the same thing with 127. If we try to find the complementary angle, and we take 90 minus 127, we actually run into trouble here. We get negative 37 as an answer. And while the two angles would in fact add up to 90 together, the definition for complement is two positive angles. So that means there's no complementary angle to 127. We should be able to determine the supplement, however. If we do 180 minus 127, we get 53 degrees. So this does have a supplementary angle. And that's it, everybody. That's your lesson for 6.1, day one.